Welcome to getting started with the Algorand Java SDK. What we're going to cover in this short video is being able to set up your development environment with Sandbox and the Java SDK, as well as create and fund a testnet account. And then we'll take a look at a couple block explorers and doing your first transaction. So the first thing we'll take a look is the Sandbox. So if you see here, I'm going out to the GitHub Algorand Sandbox repo and simply clone this particular project. Also, you need to install Docker and Git as a prerequisite. So here's the uh, sandbox uh, that has been cloned. And what we uh, need to do then to go ahead and start this up, we simply need to do sandbox up testnet. So sandbox also supports betanet and mainnet. Also, there is a, a private net instance, which you would just use a sandbox up. The private network also includes the use of an indexer, which provides a quick query capability. The indexer is disabled for mainnet, testnet, and betanet. So at this point, it's doing a fast catch up on the node, and this node will be ready within a few minutes. You can see the address and tokens displayed on the file in the readme file. Then once you get down to the end here, you might see a little bit of sync time happening when it gets down to zero, then you're ready to go. So to install the SDK, what you would do is simply go out to the palm XML file or a Maven and go ahead and insert this chunk of code right here as a dependency for uh, the Algorand SDK, and here you can see we're at version 1.70 at the time of this recording. So you'd want to go out to the GitHub repository and make sure you are at the current, at the current level. So here we are at the Java Algorand SDK repository. Scroll down a little bit and you can see the Maven information right there where we're at 1.7. Also, there's a quick start here with some code. So I'm going to run this application. So there you have the program start and execute. So I've already got my breakpoint set in this. We're going to run two methods. The first one's going to be to create an account. And the second one's going to use that account and do your first transaction, sending algos from that account to a receiver account. Okay, the first step, like I said, is to create an account. Here you can see we have both the address and the mnemonic passphrase that have been created. This is the call to create account, new account. Then you can see where you get the address function as well as the mnemonic function as well. We printed out those down below. And what we need to do now is dispense funds to this new account because it's empty. So I'm going to go ahead and press run here. And it's going to go prompt me to hit the enter key to continue. Meanwhile, we're going to copy off the address. Then go ahead and go out to the dispenser and paste it. Zero balance up there, and within a few seconds, there it is. Now we've got 10 algos in that account. Also, there are links down here for the account address and the transaction. Where do they go? To an explorer. So this is a blockchain explorer where you can go out to Algo Explorer IO, and you can see all the information associated with that particular transaction, including the transaction amount, the sender, and the receiver addresses. Also notice there's a drop down up here for mainnet, testnet, and betanet. And you can search on this in this block explorer by address, transaction, group text, transaction ID, block number, asset name, asset ID, as well as application ID. There's also another explorer by Pure State Goldseeker. And you can see again, this you've got the same balance there, as well as you would have the ability to look for blocks, addresses, transaction IDs, and assets. Now, each one of these have developer uh, portals, so you can go out to PureStake and you can use some API calls there uh, for nodes that are, are run, should you not want to use uh, the sandbox. And then also, Algo Explorer has something similar over here in the developer API, where you can utilize API calls as well that you're going to, all the API calls you're going to hear see today going to Sandbox are available in those two services as well. Okay, going back to the code, we're going to go ahead and press our key to continue. And now we're going to go into the first transaction with that account that was created. First thing we're going to check for is the client to see if it's been established yet. 
now you can see there's a connect to network method we're going to call to do that which simply instantiates the client that you see right here we're going to pass in the token and the port and host name that we got from the sandbox readme file next thing we're going to do our first client call here which is going to simply get the uh, information on the account account info call and then we're going to uh, take a look at the amount field so you can see right there is the client call the account information is the method and then we're going to pass in the address that we want to use for the the query which you can see right here and we'll go ahead and print that out down below so there you can see the account info that gets returned back and the amount is one of those fields so that is 10 million micro algos or 10 algos all right so the next step is actually get ready to do the transaction the first thing we want to do is a call to get the transaction parms so the parms are fields like the last round the minimum fees your genesis id and the fee so these are all established in the parameters the next step is to actually do the transaction. So we're setting up the transaction here with the sender account, the note field that we have, I think is hello world up here. And then we're going to uh, specify we're going to do one algo as a transfer. We have uh, uh, 10 algos on our, our balance. And then you can see here, you've got a suggested parms. Now that's where we're passing our parameters. So if you take a look at that transaction object, now you can see all the information that's associated with the transaction, including the amount field that you see right here. Then here's the process. You do the transaction, you do sign the transaction, and then you broadcast the transaction. Those are the three steps that are always involved. So on the second step here, we're gonna go ahead and sign it. So you need to sign it with the, the sender account. Whoever's sending it out has gotta approve, say, hey, this is okay. I'm sending it out of my account and I authorize it. And you use that with your, your private key that you have. Uh, the private mnemonic that we saw earlier when we created the account is really for your eyes only. They, the account can be repopulated in a wallet if you have that. So that needs to be treated with the utmost privacy. And we showed it in this demo for demo purposes, but other than that, you would never uh, share that with anyone. And then you also have the uh, response now that's going to come back from doing a raw transaction. That would be the next thing. So we have the transaction ID that we've established here. And then we're going to call raw transaction, which will broadcast it to the blockchain. Then we're going to go ahead and wait for the uh, confirmation. So when you hit the raw transaction, that's where the consensus algorithm comes into play in the blockchain. Now they're going to say, they're going to check for things like, does this client have enough algos in it to make this transaction we don't want to overspend your account also it checks for things like double spending so that is where you'll get an error if any errors occur in this process that's most likely spot when you come back from this raw transaction uh, method call again that broadcasts it out to the network wait for confirmation is a utility we have to wait for this to clear in the blockchain it's usually five seconds or under and simply goes through a loop here, checking out the uh, transaction to see if it's on the blockchain yet. And we're gonna go ahead and print the balance once again here. And there you have it. Now, what we printed out was the entire transaction at the end. This was the confirmation, a message that we got from the wait for transaction. Here are, here's the information on the fee that's get uh, entered, the amount that's there. And then down below, we actually did the subtraction for you here of both the amount and the original balance on the account. And now you can actually see the account balance. So in summary, we saw how to set up the developer environment with the Sandbox and the Java SDK. Also, we showed you how to create and fund a testnet account, along with a couple of the blockchain explorers to see instant results. Finally, we ended doing a actual transaction from the account that we created in the first step and then we sent it out to a receiving account and we looked at the three main steps there that are involved with that of creating the transaction signing it and then sending it with the raw transaction method thank you very much